Mom, I'm going to build a robot for you. It'll do all the chores for you and every other mother in the world. So you all could watch your favorite cartoons with us. When I was five, I was leisurely enjoying my evening of watching Transformers and playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It suddenly dawned on me that my mom didn't have time to watch my favorite TV show with me because she had so many chores to do to take care of me and my family. My intuition prompted me to stand up and exclaim that to her. As a child, I have always intuitively believed in a better world for my loved ones, in justice and innovation for a better society. It may be perceived as naive, but I never grew out of this hope. Ten years later, when I was 15, I carried this spirit into the day I met my uncle, where I witnessed him struggling to perform simple tasks like brushing his teeth and buttoning up his shirt because he couldn't use his hands. That was my first experience with a paralyzed person. Hand paralysis is a problem faced by over 61 million people globally. And although we have made considerable progress in rehabilitation methods, advanced robotic rehabilitation is widely inaccessible to people and quite expensive. I empathized with my uncle and my intuition prompted me to untangle this unfair situation. In the following year, I worked with neuroscientists and physiotherapists to develop ExoHeal, which is a robotic exoskeleton that aims at helping patients with hand paralysis experience a faster, more comfortable and affordable rehabilitation process. We combine robotics with neuroplasticity to retrain the patient's brain and alleviate some of the burdens they face during rehabilitation. For one of the exercises, when a movement is performed by the patient's good hand, a robotic exoskeleton assists the paralyzed hand to mirror the same motion. In this instance, the mirror neuron is activated and helps revive the paralyzed hand over time. After starting to use ExoHeal, my uncle said that he felt sensations in his paralyzed hand for the first time in many years. It ignited hope within him that one day he could eat food with his own hands again. After observing this, I intuitively knew that there was more than meets the eye. In the subsequent year, I was recognized by Google as a global finalist at the annual science fair and was nominated as a global team leader. Everything seemed to be going well, but as we all know, life is full of ups and downs. I was at an event with my dad and my vision began to uncontrollably double. I was confused and disoriented and as my doubling continued, I could not bear this mental ache and I fell to the ground. After four months of testing, I was diagnosed with intermittent exotropia, a rare medical disability that doubled my vision every two hours. It took away my ability to live a normal life, deprived me of concentrating on my aspirations and my 12th exams. And we all know how important those are. The doctors told me that surgery was my only option with a considerably high risk of losing my eyesight. In the face of what I considered to be absolute hopelessness, I heard a kind inner voice. It reminded me of my mother's words to turn setbacks into opportunities for growth. I vowed to see things differently. Your intuition can help you clarify your thoughts, identify your emotions, and develop a more balanced perspective when it comes to challenging situations. We all innately have the power of intuition in us, including all of its facets, like the kind voice, the critical voice, the paralyzing voice, and the motivating voice. As you might have observed, I can attribute all the moments that I am proud of to the kind inner voice. The problem is, we live in a world that is incredibly fast-paced, and it can be hard to slow down and listen. We are constantly bombarded with information from the outside world, and it can be hard to find the space to tune in to what is happening within inside all of us. In my case, and for approximately 300 million people dealing with anxiety, this picture looks very different, more often than not leading to the critical inner voice. But in situations like this, if we can learn to harness this kind inner voice, it can be a powerful tool 
for finding, for finding balance in our lives. It all begins with recognizing which voice you're listening to. When faced with a challenging situation, it's easy for the critical inner voice to take control of the wheel, leading to negative emotions, self-doubt, self-criticism, and eventually fear. We start thinking of the worst scenarios imaginable. When facing the crisis of my double vision, I honestly thought that I could only live two hours out of the 24 for the rest of my life. And I take two hours to eat every day. As a motivational speaker, Tony Robbins puts it, you exaggerate one experience and convince yourself that it's a reflection of your overall worth. Afterwards, I realized that it was my critical inner voice that was speaking. To address it, I engaged in reflective thinking and broke it down into smaller, more manageable pieces by asking questions. For instance, I could remain active for only two hours at a time, but if I rest for an hour, the clock would reset, leaving me with more time. Now that we've broken down the critical inner voice, we turn to harness the kind inner voice. I go back to my mother's words and ask, how can I turn this setback into an opportunity for growth? Being able to use my eyes for only two hours at a time meant that I needed to be more conscious of my active hours. As a result, I learned to multitask and manage my time better. To reiterate, recognize which voice you're listening to. Break it down into digestible pieces and, and visualize it as an opportunity for growth and execute. Now that we have the ability to manage the critical inner voice, we focus on amplifying the kind inner voice through reflection. Take a moment to gaze into the mirror. Do you see yourself for who you really are? Or are you viewing yourself through a distorted lens of self-perception? Clinical psychologist Dr. Carla Mary suggests that we often see ourselves subjectively, which can hinder our ability to recognize personal growth. By recognizing and embracing your current selves, you provide your subconscious with a solid foundation for self-awareness and personal growth. This objective view allows for the critical inner voice to be dampened so that the quiet kinder inner voice in you has a chance to make its presence. Next, imagine who you want to be in the future. Because I mean, come on, without a destination in mind, the kind inner voice has nowhere to guide you. As you internalize these reflections from the past, present, and the future, your kind inner voice will help you make choices that match your values and goals over time. My younger sister, Suha, use her kind inner voice to empathize with my plight and strive to alleviate my temporary disability. She researched strabismus's correlation with neuroplasticity and developed an innovative rehabilitation routine that helped me recover my eyesight without surgery. My sister's ability to avail herself of her kind inner voice gave me hope. It gave me motivation to overcome my own limitations I was able to adopt my mother's kind words of turning setbacks into opportunities for growth into my own intuition. With this newfound skill of relying on my intuition, I was able to make strides in the face of life's daunting hardships. Last year, we were crowned as world champions for Microsoft's Imagine Cup, and I was awarded the Diana Award for humanitarian efforts. Using these steps, to detangle myself from the critical voice, I want to do all I can in my power to make this world a better place. Our intuition is a powerful tool for finding balance and purpose in our lives. By untangling our minds and relying on this kinder inner voice, we can be more empathetic and determined and walk out from here today with a bigger vision for ourselves and the world we live in. Let's untangle ourselves today from the knots of failures, the knots of depression and anxiety, from gender or racial discrimination. So I encourage you all to take a few moments each day to connect with your inner voice. You never know where it might lead you.